Good morning. Uh, my name is Daniel Castillo, and I'm the chairperson for the committee, the Blue Ribbon Committee. Uh, I welcome all of you for being here. I know that there's an item on the agenda that is of special interest to all of you. So we hope to discuss that here today. Um, so I'd like to start on this. You think I should I need to introduce the members of the committee? No, we can start first. Okay. Oh. I mean, all right, if you would start. So does everyone have a copy of the agenda for today? Yes? Okay, good. So I'm calling the meeting to order. It's the City of Laredo Blue Ribbon Committee for People with Disabilities. It's for June 15, 2022. I'd like to call the meeting to order. And the first item, or the second item, rather, is the review and approval of minutes for May 18th, 2022. So I need you all to look at that and see if there's any changes, revisions, corrections that we need to make to those minutes, please. I'll give you all a few minutes. <laughs> so are there any changes or corrections no to the minutes are we, uh, Mr. Chair, are we reviewing the minutes I'm sorry I'm having problems hearing y'all yes we are um, I do have some concerns on page 
Are we there yet? I'm sorry, because yeah. you sound very far away. Yes, we are. Go ahead. Whatever you need to indicate to us to, for correction or changes. Um, I believe it's on page three. Okay. Towards the bottom of the page, uh, it states that I found a unit for uh, monitoring uh, ETL for $8,000. The amount that I, I found a handheld unit for with the software was uh, $325 per unit, not $8,000. Oh, it's, uh, $325 per unit. Four, eight, four. Um, further on the next page. <coughs> was that page three? Page four. No, it was uh, the front bottom back. of page three, I believe. It's hard to tell because the pagination is on the side of each page, not actually on the body of the document. Johnson, this is Deanna. It's page four. We see it at the very bottom. Thank you. Page uh -huh. four. I stand corrected. Thank you so much, Deanna. And, uh, but listen, yes, can you repeat your accurate amount? $325, $325 for a handheld ETL monitor, and that comes with the uh, software to, to create reports for um, any uh, agency that might be granting uh, governmental support money. And that's 325. I mean, who knows, it might have gone up a bit, but probably not too much because of, of inflation now. Um, and Ms. Diana, you said that's on your document at the bottom of page four? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thanks. So the kind of says uh, that I stated that I should, that I recommended to go, quote, I believe it was up above their heads, something like that. I believe I said uh, speaking with their supervising agency. I'm trying to find it. Okay. Page five in the middle. Let me see it. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you for helping me with that. Then uh, the other one, um, page, I believe it's, maybe it's six, since I'm lost with the pagination, five or six. Um, please change uh, that I stated that the agency is negligent. Please change negligent to lack of a response, because I believe that that's what Dr. Chamberlain and I were discussing that there was a lack of response uh, from the agency rather than the word negligence. Thank you so much. I apologize that my pagination is off here. No problem. Thank you. Thank you for the corrections. Connection wise, we should have sat you closer. Sorry, Mr. Bassian. Okay, with those corrections, can someone move to accept the minutes as they are? With those corrections, Anna, I need someone to second it. Okay. So it is, thank you. So Ms. Ram uh, just to advise you, you sound really uh, far away. We, we, by phone. Thank you. Yes. we apologize, Dr. Ruthinger. We had a last minute change of location due to uh, the amount of participants in the meeting. We're going to try to correct that. Thank you. Maybe we can get him a body mic or megaphone or something. Yeah, something. well. Just <laughs> Or do you want to be okay? Also, too. yeah. A megaphone. You know. Dr. Ruthinger, because we have, we're in a different room today. And we have another Sorry, guest, I so apologize. We'll I can hear you now. No question. No question. I'm crawling over the table. No. So, I'm going to have an interpreter here. Okay. <laughs> uh, Ms. Ramos, for the record, um, who who second who motioned? 
Motion, Diana, second. Ms. Diana motioned for the approval of the meeting, the minutes? Yes. And Ms. Rodriguez, second. Yes. You got it? I can hear you now. Oh, yeah. is Ms. Ramos connected? She was. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Did you get the motion information? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, so uh, item three is public comments. Before we move on to public comments, I'd just like to welcome Dr. Chamberlain. How are you? I'm doing well. I apologize for my tardiness, but thank you so much for having me. Take one point off. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. If it gets a little too cold in here, please let us know so it's we cold. can. Oh, sorry. Because <laughs> I know I was feeling it, so I'm pretty sure others were feeling it. This room is very hot and cold, so we have to continuously be adjusting the thermostat. Every 10 minutes. That was my fault. I, it actually feels so good because it was. Well, we came in here and it was. Yeah. And we'll probably have to turn it back on, so you all just let us know. We'll be making it happen. Relief. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably move some of the items around, okay, because I know that we have a number of guests, and I don't know what kind of time crunch everyone may be in. So I'd like to move to item six, and then I'll come back. Uh, Where are we going to address this? public yeah. comments first? Oh, okay. Yeah. So we have the public comment section. So uh, I don't know if anyone signed up to, for public comment. Mr. Chair, we have one person signed up. Uh, okay. Ms. Veronica Orduño, welcome. Okay. Uh, thank you, okay. thank welcome. you. I, I can wait till number six if that's what you want. Are, are you okay with that? I'm okay with that, Just, yes. Okay. Okay, so let's move then to item four. Introduction of new members approved by council on June 6th. And we have two new members, however, one of them we were not able to reach, but Amy Casares is here. Yes? Yes, welcome. Well. Yes. Hi, welcome. So we want to welcome you, and thank you for accepting our invitation. Yes, thank you so much. I'm, uh, I'm excited to serve on this committee. Thank you. Thank you. And for, I know that some of you are, are, are new to the Blue Ribbon Committee because you all haven't been here before, but primarily we are a committee that, that's appointed by the mayor. Uh, we are primary reason for existing is to advise the mayor's office as well as city council on any issues how you do how we can assist and help and advocate for individuals with disabilities and so throughout the years we've conveyed to the mayor things that we feel that the city should move on or or, or improve upon and uh, and so that's primarily the reason why the committee exists is to advocate it's to make a, the public aware of what's available and how they can find help and assistance for their family members who may uh, need an additional assistance. So thank you all for being here. Um, so Christine, your item five, we're always anticipating a great <laughs> information. So Christine Reyes, special needs program, um, item five. Try to be brief in the report because I know I always have a long report. So if anything, just stop me if we need any more additional information or after the report, any information I can provide. Our program attended the Regional Disability Leadership Network meeting for Texas Council of Developmental Disabilities. Our program recommendation to the Regional Disability Network was to invite all Texas Governor Committees on People with Disabilities and hope to have a closer connection with every committee throughout Texas and network with them. Another recommendation was provided to the state webpage and the committee page with success stories of inclusion and advocacy with the detailed plan of action that was taken to help guide other cities, local governments, and organizations to implement. These recommendations were accepted by the Regional Disability Le Leadership Network. <coughs> Our program created a partnership with Spina Bifida Texas 
This organi organization overlooks San Antonio, Laredo, and South Texas cities and counties. A referral system has been established for the organization to refer families from Laredo, Texas. Spino Bifida Texas offers resources, education, seasonal, and awareness events. This year for Spino Bifida Day in July, they have collaborated with Morgan's Wonderland. Uh, this is where they're gonna be offering free meals, entry for all SB families. They've also uh, are gonna help us benefit from the lending closet program that they offer families. Um, these, uh, this will help tremendously because it's gonna offer items such as crutches, wheelchairs, for all, wheelchairs of all sizes, walkers of different grades and sizes, and daily living supplies. The state sent over time-sensitive resources for financial assistance for children with rare diseases. Cheyenne's Champions for Children, also known as CC4C, was invited, uh, was inviting families with children up to ages 18 who have a rare or undiagnosed medical condition and the tech, in, in hopes that Texas residents apply for the financial assistance. Our program sent out the mass email as well as the text and we were able to assist a family from Laredo to connect and fill out an application for the um, assistance. Our program also connected with Swim Angel Fish by Collins Hope's uh, executive director. Uh, Swim Angel Fish is a global leader in adaptive swim instruction. Our program connected with Cindy and Eileen, the founders of the company, and we're, we were encouraged to apply for a scholarship and happily we were uh, able to receive it. <clears throat> Only Alpha Pool Products Down Syndrome Advocacy Group is a nonprofit organization that is dedicated to helping reduce drowning statistics. This goal is to offer, their goal is to offer financial support to aquatic centers, organizations that are striving to improve quality of programs for diverse populations. Uh, the City of Laredo Parks and Recreation Department, as well as our program, will receive Swim Whisper certifications. The Adaptive Swim Whisper certification programs will help teach instructor, instructors how to assess and identify roadblocks and how to implement corrective strategy to overcome them. Our program has received resources through Swim Angel Fish and also Collins Hopes, video materials for water safety. Uh, we'll be hosting our first, our first water safety presentation with collaboration with the public libraries. Our first presentation will be on June 23rd at 3.30 p.m. at Lamar Bruni Inner City Branch, where the presentation will be available for registered families. On site, we'll have sensory activities for the children, provide the families with sensory token bags with water safety resources. Our program followed up with Brighton Center from San Antonio, Texas. The meeting topics um, for the upcoming visit for the program to Brighton Center in the month of July was discussed. Um, the goal for the visit is to learn more about the services they provide to the children with special health care needs community and how they collaborate with early childhood intervention. An in-person conference has been approved for our program to invite Brighton Center Executive Director and ECI Director from San Antonio, Texas to discuss how learning centers and daycares can provide the right help at the right time and level the playing field for kids with disabilities and developmental delays in our community. The event date has been selected for Saturday, August 6. Uh, our program and Brighton Center will provide the centers with education and recommendations on how to implement developmental services to children with disabilities or delays, empowering them to achieve their individual potential, making them successful in our community. Save the date invitations will be sent out for registration information. Details on location times are still being coordinated. Our program will keep the committee informed with new updates. Our staff completed a disaster preparedness, people with disabilities training. The DSHS representatives were um, issued out our CEUs for the participation of the training. The training provided the program with opportunities to learn and prepare and include personal preparedness. Our program, after taking the, uh, the training, we connected with our epidemiology department on the border Operation Border Health Preparedness Emergency Exercise event that they'll be hosting in July. We'll, uh, our program will be inviting 200 families to this event to receive services and their emergency funding cards. This event is open to the community and we're encouraging our population to attend and receive services. And uh, we will be hosting a booth that will be providing emergency funding to the families that are registered. Uh, 
our program will also be assisting the incident commander and staff with sensory regu regulation material to have on site to help families on their visit and residents that attend the event. Our program created educational flyers for this month uh, and videos for the following. Water safety, children mental health is important. Summer tips for kids with ADHD. Therapeutic recreation activities that benefit the child, young adults, adult, young adult speech, occupational and physical need. And our program will continue to share tips to keep uh, the, ch the children on a routine schedule to help with transitioning back to the school routine when summer is over. There's two upcoming events that we have in the month of June and July. Um, our Family Support Community Resource Program is still collaborating with Healthy Living. Uh, we're gonna be, we were invited to the UISD Family Matters Resource Center. We were invited to host a nutritional class as well as have activities that include Play-Doh therapy, art therapy, and we'll be issuing sensory token bags to the families that attend. Uh, the, idea, the ideas and information of the activities are going to be shared with the families to participate at home and how they can benefit the child's cognitive skills, motor skills, and social skills. And on Wednesday, July 27th, our program will be hosting an educational webinar, Special Needs Planning, Medicaid Waivers, SSI Eligibility and Preserving Benefits, Education on Medicaid Waivers, specifically the Texas IDD Service System, SSI Eligibility, and the importance of preserving benefits. Uh, we'll be collaborating with the Consolidated Planning Group and Social Security Office for this we educational webinar. And that is my report. Thank you. <laughs> Very thorough. Thank you so much. Anyone have any questions? Ms. Shayas, I have a question. You mentioned the Biden Center in cooperation with ECI services to uh, help um, um, kids with developmental delays um, develop. I, I was just wondering, is there a component of um, communication speech therapy services that is being planned? As far as Laredo, uh, I know Laredo ECI already has a relationship with learning centers and daycares so that they right. can uh, come right. into I'm, the facility. I'm aware of that, but you mentioned Brighton Center is, is cooperating and starting a team uh, to team with ECI to prevent more uh, to prevent delays or to actually enhance the development of kids with developmental delay. I was just wondering about the component of communication if that's going to um, be included in this new partnership. Yes, um, I believe Ms. Holly, the executive director, did mention to us that their, uh, everything from their planning and um, teamwork that they have in San Antonio in the Brighton Center, they've developed this center specifically for children with special health care needs to help with the transitional needs they have for the school era. So what they do is they teamed up with ECI to have in-house in their own facility so that the child is getting their education as well as their OT, PT, and speech opportunities uh, to excel in all, all areas of their health. Uh, so this collaboration they have in San Antonio, it's a beautiful one. Um, I, I know here we, we currently have it, but we haven't had a facility that's in-house ECI before. That sounds great. I want to thank you for everything that you do. Keep us posted, on, and I'm specifically, of course, uh, really interested in, in the communication component. Thank you so much. I appreciate you so much, everything that you do. Thank you. Thank you for your input, Dr. Boothinger. Um, any other questions? No? Okay. So let's move on to item six, which is discussion and possible action regarding City Council item agenda requested by City Council Vanessa Perez. <clears throat> and let me go through this. It's discussion with possible action on helping improve the quality of life within the City of Laredo for individuals with autism spectrum disorders and their families to include establishing an autism and special needs master plan with the goal of building a more inclusive community where persons with disabilities are empowered and enables to realize their full potential and participate fully as integral and contributing members of society. Hosting a series of town hall meetings through the Blue Ribbon Committee to listen to the concerns of the autism community, thereby creating the framework of a proactive strate strategic plan 
and initiating a coalition for access to autism services through the health department to be composed of key staff, parents, caregivers, educators, stakeholders, and any other matters incident thereto. Uh, this item is also co-sponsored by Council Member Alberto Torres, Ruben Rodriguez Gutierrez, and um, Lisa Gutierrez as well. Cigar Radio, sorry. Um, and so I understand that we have a number of individuals here today that have expressed concern or would like to speak on behalf of this agenda item. Yes, sir. So. Okay, uh, for the record, Veronica Orduño, founder of Families for Autism Support and Awareness. I have worked with some of you for a very long time because we've been in this journey since my son was uh, diagnosed 20, let me do the math, I'm a math teacher, 26 <laughs> years ago. Uh, <clears throat> back then, autism was called atypical autism, and then they moved it to uh, autism disorder. And now you were, you're gonna hear autism and you're gonna hear autism spectrum disorder. And that's what it is. So I'm here to let you know, and of course you already know, but to emphasize that our children with autism are in a spectrum. And just because you met one of them doesn't mean that you have met all of them. We have adults that have gone through life without being diagnosed. Okay, so when you look at this and you're now you're members of this um, coalition uh, for autism special needs master plan, I, I ask you to keep all that in mind. We are, are working with children from two years of age all the way to adults that are like 65 years of age that are here in Laredo. And they are home, they don't know what to do. We have nothing for them here in Laredo. Uh, so, um, I was going to ask you, help us, help us with all the needs that we have. We have needs ranging from definitely inclusion, there's not enough inclusion in Laredo for our children. I went, I, I sent some emails early in March uh, to the Parks and Rec Department because we don't want any more of our children with autism to become statistics, drowning statistics. We already have a drowning statistic. Last June, it happened, in fact, it's gonna be a year where it happened that a little boy wandered off from, from home at night and they found him drowned. And in that, that, that July, I was gonna come back and ask uh, the city council to be proactive and it all, it, to be yeah, proactive, and it so happened that he drowned. When I went to city council in July, it was already, we're being reactive. We don't want that. So we're asking from little things of inclusion, like I tell you, I, I send an email to Parks and Rec. I did ask them um, as nicely as I could um, <laughs> uh, to include our children in their swimming classes in swimming camps, to open swimming camps for our kids because they are prone to water. And um, I said, when you say camps for all, mean camps for all, and I didn't get um, feedback. Response. Now we're getting feedback because we went to city council last week, so now, of course, everybody's like, yeah, let me help you, let me help you. And we were promised a camp in two weeks. We're gonna see if that happens. So that you know what's going on in the community. We have, according to someone in the city, um, we are gonna have a camp, a swimming camp. And we're not talking about, because they are going to tell you that they have adaptive aquatics it's one day it was pre-pandemic one day a Saturday one hour a week that is not going to teach me how to swim okay and we're not asking throw them in the pool we're asking first do water safety then after water safety yes get them in the pool and they're gonna be natural swimmers they really are but when they wander and they're in this state of emergency, they're not gonna know what to do. This is where the water safety is coming in. Another thing, so we went from the little ones, from water safety, there's so many other concerns, you know, that employment. So now let's go to employment. Our kids are out there, our adults are out there with degrees. We have an adult that has two degrees from Tammy U, cannot keep a job and cannot keep a job because the social skills, 
They do not, re they don't have the social skills you and I have. So we, uh, we need help in that too. And what a better way to train them, train them through the workforce, have them work at LISD, have them work at UISD, have them work at the city of Laredo. They are products of LISD and UISD. So what better way to have them? And train them, definitely, because if you see me and I have autism and you um, want to start a conversation with me, I am not going to start a conversation with you, okay? Because I have my autism and my social skills lack. And if you want to talk about, you know, baseball, and that's not my interest, I'm going to, and I'm an adult, I'm going to turn around that and I'm gonna talk about dinosaurs and what adult wants to talk about dinosaurs, okay? Maybe not with a movie, you wanna talk about that, but not every day. So I'm asking you, please, please expedite this. We've been in this journey for the last 23 years and yes, Laredo has progressed. Yes, they have. And the school districts are doing the best that they can, but there's so much more out there. Like uh, Councilwoman Perez said, I'm tired of hearing about San Antonio, San Antonio, San Antonio, San Antonio, okay? And this is where our parents are leaving. They're moving, okay? Having a child with autism is a life-changing um, event. We have parents that have quit their jobs to go to college with their kids. We have parents who have moved from Loredo to San Antonio to have uh, a better quality of life for our kids. So it's not going to be that disability that you can see. It's not gonna be the disability that, okay, well, they're deaf or they're mute or, or any other disability. This is a wide range of gifts that you have out there with our kids. So I'm asking you, I'm pleading with you, uh, expedite this. We need it out there. Yes, you hear me and you have Sylvia with me and you have a parent here with me, but, I, I get text and I got a really long text and no, I'm not gonna read it to you, but I showed it to Miss Amy and I showed it to Sylvia and it says, tell them this, Mrs. Orduño. It's like, usted primero, Mrs. Orduño. It's like, okay, yeah, but I, I can't. I, I, I'm just one voice, okay? I'm the voice of Tito and all the Titos in Laredo, okay? That's, that's who I am. And, but know that we have, we are 750 members strong. We have over 750 kids in autism. Our Facebook page has like 1,500 people in it, okay? But we are out there. And just because we're not very vocal, we, we need the services. We need inclusion for our kiddos. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, Ms. Orlando. Thank you, thank you. It's good to hear your voice, Ms. Ortonio, and yes, I hear you, Thank you loud and strong. Thank you, Congratulations. Doctor. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. If I may add, uh, I, I do want to let you know that the, the vocational rehab program is available. They do provide uh, autism supports. Okay. Uh, they provide employment services. I happen to be one of the providers for employment services. We have had tremendous success when we placed. It takes longer. Uh, it's it um, that population is a gift mm -hmm. I mean every population is a gift but that population is something that's very dear to heart but I've seen counselors work really hard uh, the VR program is a short term in the sense of per case but then cases open up again and everything but it does take a process and it does take people who have individuals like that and young man who has two degrees to come forth and say, I need the services, because once individuals leave the school system, they have to become their own advocates. And as parents and supporters and natural supports, you all can assist. But I can tell you that the VR program is an amazing program, because it I've seen the changes in lives. I wouldn't do this. I do a lot of travel. And I can tell you that I would not do the travel that I do if I did not see the supports there, and I didn't see the work. So. By all means, you have my number, call me up. I am just the hands and feet on the outside. Your counselors, like uh, the one sitting next to me, I mean, the people on this committee are there, but we need to know because we can't do anything. And all of us have limitations. I am limited by referral. Um, she might be limited by procedures, but it is possible to have successful cases and right. successful integration. So mm -hmm. VR, I know, I speak for Ms. Ramos, is uh, is here to assist. Thank you so much. 
If I may also thank you very much, Ms. Ozunia, for your comments, uh, Dr. Richard Chamberlain with City of Laredo Health. We absolutely appreciate it that this was placed onto the agenda as it is health's mission to establish health equity and to continue to build that within our community. Um, I did send this exact um, text out to members of the Texas Association of City and County Health Officials to query them to inquire, does your department or do your departments work on initiatives like this? And they said generally they don't, but they, are, they were absolutely thrilled to see that this is coming out in Laredo and that health will continue to champion causes such as these. That's also the beauty of coming into this type of committee right now and, and sharing um, perspective of it and also for us to be able to connect the dots for, with what we have right now, but then continue to strengthen, as you mentioned, um, every day as we go forward into the future until we have that quality of life that everybody deserves in the community. With us here at Health, we were very fortunate to have um, Christine's program brought on board uh, two and a half years ago and we will continue to source programs such as these for the community. And we have a couple that are percolating in the background. Um, we don't want to say that, um, that we have them, because we don't, but we'll be submitting for those in the future. And we're very hopeful um, with the support of this committee, with the support of um, the Autism and Special Needs um, master plan that we want to develop that will help strengthen our um, opportunities for securing these types of funds to come back into Laredo. So I just wanted to make sure that that is um, loud and clear. We will always be um, the, the, the cheerleaders for the community to ensure that we are um, bringing a better quality of life, but at the heart of it is ensuring health equity for all. Thank you, sir. Would anybody else like to say anything? Because I know that there's quite a number of you here. Mr. Lino, thank you for your words. Also, Eric Castillo here from PCI Project Ninos, Child Fund Coordinator, and also Speech Language Pathologist Assistant. A lot of things you said right now, the inclusivity, and also just thinking in general, like, I think a lot of communities, not only Laredo, but I think a lot of communities are starting to wake up to that, that idea that we need to be more inclusive and be more aware of that, of that need. Because it's, it's just getting, we're just seeing more cases and more cases right. as the years go by. And I visit a lot of daycare centers, a lot of centers here in town, and everyone is asking for help. Teachers are asking for help. Directors are asking for help. Like, Eric, we need more training. We need our teachers to be able to handle children with that, with autism or any kind of uh, spectrum that they're dealing with. They're not educated, they're not aware, so they're frustrated and they don't know how to handle it. So when Christine came up to me, he's like, Eric, there's a great idea that we can start spreading the, the information that for these centers, like the childcare centers, to be able to be more inclusive and to have like sensory rooms and implement uh, calming stations and to be able to promote that. And as a community, all of us together, like Richard said, Dr. Chamberlain, for all to connect the dots, we're like, you know what? There are ways that we can all come together and figure out how to best put this all together. Like little by little, we're gonna be to that point where we can all have that quality of life and to be inclusive. And but. It takes people like in this generation that we're all coming together like, hey, this is lacking. This is what we can do. How do we put it all together? So it's awesome to be here. I'm, I'm, thank you so much for inviting me to this meeting today. I feel like ECI is, is a big part of the child development at a very young age, especially we're working a lot with a lot of kids that are not diagnosed yet. So we're working with them and, and making sure that at the point that we have the signs of early signs of autism, that we're able to educate the family on how to work best with that child. And we have the parent, uh, the Pathways Parent Training Program. And it's a very beautiful program. I think we've had it for about six years here in Laredo. And it works right hand in hand with a lot of the kiddos that are just being seen like, oh, they have the red flags already. And we can get them in the program and educate the families. And we work very closely with the families up to the age of three. So after the age of three, that's when the, like, the other parts of the, like the UISD, LISD, Head Starts, and everybody comes together to help that family out and make sure that the resources are there for that family. But like, I think uh, these kind of meetings are just essential for that kind of planning, you know, that everybody comes together. And I think it's going to be brilliant on that master plan. Of course, mm -hmm. it'll be uh, a culmination of all the experts in the room, and then of course, plus the community involved by developing those smart, 
action goals for us to take that stepped approach, but then be able to have a document that, as you just mentioned right now, there's individuals from certain organizations or entities, whether private or, or public, um, that don't know how to manage situations in general that can then be directed to this online document platform that can help guide individuals. So as we move forward with town halls, um, we're very happy that this is going to become um, something that is um, written text so that we have this document for the community and, I, and I'm hoping that it comes sooner than later, um, but we are working in the background as well to put together these town halls and Erica can share a little bit more on that. Yes, and I did want to circle back. Good afternoon, everyone. Erica Martinez, Assistant Director of the Health Department. Um, I'm very excited to see all of you here, here and to start seeing the connections and bridging those resources uh, that are needed um, with the people that are most in need. Uh, I've seen a lot of great work come from this committee. Uh, Mr. Castillo knows that this is very close to my heart also, and whatever charge BRC has identified, I work tirelessly to make sure that it gets done. Um, to, so to circle back to those action items that were a council directive, um, we do see uh, initiating the coalition for access to autism services. So uh, we did have discussions with uh, city management about you know BRC and the work that we have done uh, the resources that are available, the subject matter experts that we have sitting on this committee, and how we can bridge into that development of a coalition. So for the next steps, we are looking to identify additional key members of our community so that we can meet, develop that coalition, and see what our next steps will be. Um, in partnership with BRC and that coalition, uh, there are going to be town halls that are going to be designated uh, across the city. Uh, management, we have the support of city management to where we're going to work with council members and coordinate in rec centers, something that's accessible to the community to to hear additional input. Um, it's great to hear, you know, it's great that you're speaking out and reaching out to us. But what else is out there? What else uh, is needed? Um, you know. Two heads are better than one. So uh, being able to have an entire community contribute to what our next steps will be, I think is also very important. And then of course that would de derive into the master plan. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, in, in initial conversations with Dr. Chamberlain, we were thinking master plan and we're thinking, you know, um, an extensive document of pages and pages and pages that addresses all of these important issues. Uh, but in starting with a subset and starting small, not, not small, but pinpointing the most critical things that are needed and what we need to action on, being able to produce that quickly, I think is what's important. Um, and, and just giving that guide to the city, to the private sector, and to the community about what our shared vision is to become that inclusive city. I feel that, yes, there's the need and we have the passion to do better, but also in hearing the feedback from Techo and saying, hey, Laredo's leading the way in building this coalition, in the city being spotlight you know spotlighting this need and moving forward with it uh, we talked about you know the need for um, or Ms. Orduña did about the reduction of the drowning risk and that's in community in general but incorporating the adaptive aquatics bringing in certifications bringing in a strategic plan uh, an official training that certifies that gives that knowledge to our staff in parks or city employees in general is is very important so thank you christine for for pursuing that and just you know the awareness the knowledge so i know christine is working even in partnering with library and having that um those um educational sessions about reducing drowning um available to the community uh, and then we talk about uh, inclusion, of course, with this master plan is going to be um, where we bridge that gap. And in employment, you know, hearing those immediate connections being done, that's the first thing I thought. I'm like, Ms. Sartunia, you need to you need to come to our VRC so yes. you can connect. 
Um, I I'm happy to report that City of Laredo Health Department has been working for a number of years now where we have placed students over the summer uh, for student work experience, adult paid experience, volunteers, internships. Um, we try to be the, the pilot or the example for the rest of the city services to show these programs are successful. These are beneficial not only for a person with special needs that then contribute, you know, feels that he's con he or she's contributing, but for the employer as well. Um, I've seen great professional development in our current staff and neurotypical staff that say, you know what, like now I see things in a different perspective or they shared a summer with someone that was, you know, that was deaf. Mm -hmm. And they, at the end of the session, our staff had learned, you know, basic sign language. Mm -hmm. So seeing that integration is, is important and seeing those success stories. So we definitely want to broaden the scope of that. Um, we're, we're making headway. Yes. I, I, I would hate to fall in this, you know, woe is us, like, you know, we're, we're in this turmoil. I, I think we're, we're moving in the right direction and I'm very excited that it's spotlighted mm -hmm. and now we can kind of see that momentum moving forward. So I do thank you all for attending today, uh, Christine for sharing the good work that we're doing, and I'm excited to see what's to come. So with that said, like I said, um, we will be coordinating um, the implementation of the coalition. So for anyone interested in that, please let me know and we'll flag your name on the sign-in sheet to include you in any additional communication. And then of course, town hall meetings will be con conducted with city management and we'll, we have your contact information that would be shared with all. And I would highly encourage you if possible, I know we're all very busy, but to attend because this is, you know, the, the more, um, the more attendance, the more contributions we have, the better result of the master plan and in actionable items that are gonna impact our community directly. So thank you. Yes, thank you, Ms. Ordonia, for coming forward. I know it's not always easy. Um, and when you have a child with special needs, it requires more than just parents, you know. I worked at Border Region for 26 years and um, I used to tell my wife, you know, God made parents like us, and then he made super parents, okay? <laughs> because super parents are those that have individuals with disabilities, and you need to be consistently there, constantly there, and they grow, and they're not like any other child, okay? They, they grow, and they have some needs, and you still need to feed them and make sure that, they're, that you, know, you clothe them, and their they're everyday today hygiene needs to be taken care of. So. It's 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 a it's a it's a, you know I think you mentioned it it's it's a life changing event okay and it's rewarding but it's very very challenging and it tests you and it tests you as a parent okay I know it does and so you know normal kids test parents okay and sometimes <laughs> you're like yeah okay. and so you can imagine how difficult it is when you have a child that needs constant oversight and care. And so, you know, I, I, I know it's not easy, and I thank you for coming forward. And I know that it's very easy for most individuals to just move it to one side and quickly forget. But if you're here and you keep us informed, okay, and keep us on our toes and <laughs> that of city council, I'm sure that, you know, you'll get some results, positive results, unlike you've had in the past. Um, you know, I think it's, it's always, it was mentioned that you need to contribute. Everybody needs to contribute, and it is true. Not one individual, one organization can possibly help and do everything. It's impossible. You can't do it. Okay, it's it's never been easy. You know, even for a normal child, it's not easy. And so you need the school systems, assistance, and the health departments, and and everyone else's inv investment into the into raising that child. And so I understand how difficult it is. And so I th we thank you for coming forward, and we'll, we'll do what we can from our end to try to improve your life and that of your loved ones. Okay. Uh, you know, but in the meantime, there's, there's things that we can do. I know that the, you mentioned jobs and you mentioned employment. That's a very challenging. We've, we've, 
When we started this committee 15, 20 years ago, that was, that was the number one thing. How do we educate employers to hire individuals with disabilities? What, do we, what kind of assistance or supports do we need to give them so that they feel confident in the person that they're hiring? And it's been successfully done, but it, it takes, you know, it's an, a change of attitude because it's an attitude, okay, it's about whether you're willing to do it or not. You know, you mentioned San Antonio. Hey, you know, I hate to bring it up, but yes, you go into any major store in San Antonio and the first person that greets you is an individual in a wheelchair with a disability. Mm -hmm. You don't see that here. Why? And so that, that's a challenge, okay? That's, that's an issue with attitude and, and the culture that we have to change, okay? And so uh, it, takes, it takes time, unfortunately. It's not something we can just switch on and switch off. But uh, I do thank you for being here. And from our end, you know, I promise that we'll do whatever we can to make some positive changes in your life and those of everyone that's here and your children as well and your family members. And if I can add just one last thing before we close. Uh, I, uh, I, I do want you to know also that we, he was talking about jobs and everything, but I can tell you right now that the VR program uh, and I'm going to put Jaime on the spot because <laughs> <laughs> I let you do that. Uh, uh, Jaime is our point of contact at UISD, okay? And we've been working collaboratively to work with individuals between the ages of 14 and 21 to do not only the job placement after they graduate, but to do, play, uh, to do services. The state of Texas has appropriated funding so that school districts can embrace bringing embedded services such as the ones you're talking about supports and you know uh, the social skills training to campuses in the city of Laredo and across the nation. So the the process sometimes because there's so much red tape takes a little bit, but I can tell you individuals like Jaime and in LISD like Mr. Um, uh, Gomez and Becky Morales are there as uh, providers. We had an opportunity this year to provide services at Cigarro High School specifically on the areas that you were talking about. It wasn't more than an hour a day, but my trainers at that time showed up every single day and it was the most amazing thing. Now, we don't expect it to stay small. We expect it to be go crazy in the city. Why? Because honestly, my company, Let's Go Texas, believes in changing the life of an unborn child. And I think that's what we want because when we place individuals to work in the community, what we receive is more than what we will ever give in a paycheck mm -hmm. because we're changing lives. So I'm glad that you've been doing this for just a long time. My, 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 I, I commend you for that. Uh, I've been doing this for a few years and it is hard work, mm -hmm. but I know that together we can make a difference. It takes a village to raise a child. Yes, Thank you. Thank you. So, and I do want to add, um, BRC meetings are public, so you're always welcome to join us. We do meet the third Wednesday of every month at 11 a.m. here at your health department. So um, keep a lookout for it. Agendas are posted uh, Friday before the meeting. Uh, also, uh, with this development of the coalition with guidance from city management, we are looking at incorporating additional key stakeholders uh, that includes fire, PD, parks, of course, from the city of Laredo, uh, economic development, uh, we've seen interest, you know, there are community members coming forward saying, I want to be part of this. So that's also very exciting. Um, we have seen, and members of the private sector, I know we've had previous conversations about uh, member, b business owners, entrepreneurs wanting to um, develop a business plan that revolves, uh, you know, around addressing this population so and our community as a whole. So we definitely want to also further develop those resources and make the those connections. So we have a, a plan of action, a vision for that coalition and seeing how it'll progress with the town halls and to develop the master plan. So uh, I do see maybe putting some metrics, kind of putting an end date, a deadline. I learned that from Dr. Chamberlain, putting those flags on where we need to be by when. Um, and, and moving forward, I would encourage Mr. Chair uh, to maybe designate at least two members of the committee of BRC to be actively involved in this coalition for this special project. Of course, like I said, anyone would be welcome to attend uh, once we establish the meeting. Sure. 
And I think, you know, Erica, just ask you all, you're welcome at any time that we meet, or if you have a concern, you can convey that concern to us. Uh, Dr. Chamberlain does a very good job about conveying those concerns to city council. <laughs> and so, you know, you're not getting that kind of response or immediate action. I think that you, you, you could come through us and we might be able to assist you. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion regarding item six? No. Any item seven, we can move on to item seven. Any announcements? Yes, I have an announcement. Uh, in the past, we, our, our church uh, has um, sponsored the Night to Shine. And the last couple of years, we weren't able to because of COVID. But we just got designated as, uh, what is it called, as host for the, for the event again. So we will be holding, uh, I would love to see all of you for not doing anything on the Friday before Valentine's Day. You want a date? I can provide you a date for that night. <laughs> we need helpers. We, uh, we're super excited. I am claiming a building, and I won't mention the building because I already talked to Mr. Luigi, but I'm claiming a building because I am expecting an, uh, an excessive number of individuals. If she has 750 individuals, imagine I mean, and they're all young. Our, this program services individuals between the ages of 14 all the way to 80 plus. Our oldest uh, individual that has shown up on that night has been 79 years old. Okay. I'm sorry. We crowned the, fri uh, the Friday, Friday before, before Valentine's, Valentine's Day. So February 10th. Yeah, February 10th. We, we crown, we provide limousine rides, we provide food, we provide every single thing. Uh, so I, I think it's an amazing event and it's life changing. So if you want to date on Monday and you want to serve, contact me, please. Thank you. You're welcome. I know that you typically have asked for donations. We will ask for, we will take anything. <laughs> yeah, I tell people I take crumbs Fly. because I can make good food out of crumbs. <laughs> okay, so you, if you know of anyone that is interested in participating or has uh, even information because we give up uh, uh, bags of, of, this is a perfect opportunity. We're not going to set up booths because everyone gets all dressed up on that night. It's like and a prom. It's right? a prom like yeah. event. Red carpet affair, uh, music, robots, uh, you know, limousines. You're talking about we charge nothing for it. Uh, our, our events have atten been attended. We had Senator Safirini who showed up one night and I thought she's going to be here for 10 minutes. She was there the whole night. The whole night and left us with a blessing for the following year. So I know that uh, we uh, advocate for opportunities for growth. And there are, there's, there's some things that are missing, but then there's a lot of things. We have a, we're the people of the Abrazo. We're the people who, who want to make a difference. So sometimes we just need to know how. So this is a great opportunity. I'm giving you plenty of notice, so there's no <laughs> two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so, Dr. Thank Chamberlain you. already has a suit set aside. That's, right. That's, right. That's, right. That's the first thing we thought about, right? <laughs> Serving food, cleaning tables, you, that night you cater mm -hmm. and you leave there with more than you will ever give. Yeah. That's true. Thank you, Ms. Gutierrez. I know thank you've you. always done that. Yes. I'm a so, bit thank on you so much. <laughs> Ms. Gutierrez mentioned that it's from the Tim Tebow Foundation. Oh yes, it's part of the Tim Tebow Foundation, and we are we're always I always I called I think the first year I called like thirty times and asked if Tim Tebow could be here, but he was in Uganda or some other place. So every year I bug I've been bugging. I think he must have like maybe thirty emails by now. I, I keep sending messages, believing that one of these days Tim Tebow. So if you don't come and he comes, you've lost out. <laughs> Any other announcements? No. Okay. I'll move on to item eight, which is the adjournment. So, um, did you want to circle back to item um, four? Or oh, that's right. Did I know we briefly else? mentioned Ms. Gasseres. I don't know if you wanted to provide sure, sure. background or. Sure. We'd love to hear from you. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well. Um, 
Good afternoon, checking my watch. It's not good morning. Good afternoon to everybody. Um, yes, well, I'm, I'm happy to serve on this committee. Um, I'm an educator, a lifetime educator. I work with Laredo ISD. Uh, previously, I worked with UISD. Um, this is, uh, I'm ending my 27th year in education. Um, I've served as a teacher, um, an assistant principal at two high schools, and currently I'm a special education supervisor with the department at Laredo ISD. Uh, so I'm very familiar, you know, with the special needs, and I've worked with Ms. Orduño, or Ms. Orduño has worked with us on, on various projects. Um, and uh, first, should I say we've collaborated, and okay. also with UISD. <laughs> so uh, I'm, you know, well schooled with working with uh, different people, different um, different backgrounds, and um, you know, we're always uh, ready to to assist and and to look for solutions, or if not solutions. Uh, try to offer people, you know, different opportunities for for their children, and of course, in the education field, to provide the best, the absolute best uh, education that any child with special okay. needs now in my capacity that they can that they can get. So we work with the campuses, we work with administrators, with teachers, and of course with the parents. And uh, and again, the ultimate goal is always the best interest of the students, for them to grow to. Uh, serve the community as I, and now Ms. Wilson, you know she continues with her projects which is which are excellent um, so that the children can have the best life possible um, yes. and to reach their potential and maybe even surpass so that that is our goal and and again I'm just happy to serve on the committee and you know anything that we can help with or that I can help with you know we'll, we'll look for for um, you know people to assist and and to guide what, what the goal is Okay. Thank you for accepting our invitation to be a member. No, thank you. No, on the contrary. <laughs> uh, you know, I think that it's always important to bring people from different backgrounds, and and uh, so I know that the committee will be vastly enriched by your experience oh. and education. So thank you for being here. Thank you to everybody. Yes, welcome. Welcome. Very thank excited. You. Thank you. Um, any comments? Yes. Hi, um, I'm Ilse Salcedo. I'm the concerned mom <laughs> as well. Um, I came into well contact with Ms. Councilwoman Perez um, a couple of weeks ago um, in desperation of uh, child care services for my son. He's nine, and yes, there is um, uh, daycares until the age of 12, uh, but I've called over, over 20 daycares, and um, interviewing the directors and everything it's it's been a surprise to me that uh, they don't have the education with uh, children with special needs and it's um, it's a major factor of importance that they do receive that education um, not only because it's um, you know it's not the same thing as having them there and then just you know giving them the tablet it's it's um, actually helping them through that meltdown and um, my son went through an ECI and um, he um, he was able to speak and then after that oh, this gets me very emotional um, but in I, I just I graduated last year uh, with my bachelor's in psychology so right now um, I started to work at SCAN um, and it's uh, been very great I've been able to finally socialize because I was a stay-at-home mom for seven years <laughs> So uh, being able to actually work, uh, you know, contribute to society. And um, now that I'm working, I had a major setback with not having that uh, uh, daycare services. So um, that was what brought me to uh, Councilwoman Perez, to Christine, to everybody. Um, uh, but I do want to, to ask that this had, oh, this to be in, in in the spotlight, you know, to to be, you know, in the news everywhere, to be surveys, to be everywhere, to to have that education, maybe at uh, Laredo College, to have that, you know, um, funding for, um, uh, to have that, you know, just like the nursing program, but the special uh, education program, to something. I'm just, you know, one person that um, I happen to have a need in the moment, but I know that Ms. Ordunia has been doing it for several years, and and this is a little bit overwhelming, <laughs> but I'm just, you know, um, I actually, um, I contacted Ms. Uh, Stanley, I spoke to her from Parks and Rec, and I was telling Christina about 
um, her also being on board with, you know, possibly doing a summer program contracting uh, labor, uh, contract labor uh, for the summer. She said hopefully by July or August if they, had, if they had the staff, the instructors. So I'm not sure um, who, um, well, Christine could probably, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I didn't mean to put you on the spotlight, Ms. Yeah. Alcedo, but I think that your story was important to share. I had the pleasure, of course, of connecting with you in our previous meeting. And I think it brings a lot of, gives you the story and, and it's a prime example of, of what that entails, right? And what even regardless if it was just, ha you know, having your child wanting to stay in the workforce as you know, a mom and having these challenges, I mean, that really highlights, especially now, we see a huge um, we, huge turnover, right? And workforce will agree with me. We see the statistics, especially in women in the workforce that are, are really, they don't have any other option but to exit the workforce to provide childcare, to provide, you know, that, uh, what do they call it, like domestic engineering services. And and we lose that talent. So on the economic development, workforce development side, that's another uh, component to address is how do we provide these support services so that we can retain that talent and just have better contribution. So, and we do see the connection. Christine has done great work in making, yes, with San Antonio that does everything awesome. But <laughs> hey, why rebuild the, 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 why rebuild the wheel, right? Um, we can see what their best practices are, what works, what doesn't, and see what we can implement for our community and, and provide that knowledge. So uh, I think that's very important as well. But I, I, I'm very excited. I hope you are too. Um, we will keep the momentum, trust me, based on my history with this committee, when they have a plan, when uh, they have a project, um, they see it through. And, and, and we make sure that, that it continues, that we keep that momentum. So uh, like I said, I didn't mean to put you on the spotlight, but I really, I think it was important for you to share your story. I have so much uh, in my mind going on, and I'm thinking, how do I, you know, so many things going on, but um, I, I, I appreciate you being here. I'm actually on my lunch time. Today. Yes, I know. So, so thank you for um, joining us. Thank, and I just want to say um, for all the working professionals, uh, do you love what you're doing? Uh, do you want to keep doing it? Because I do too. And, and I know even though some parents don't have, you know, they work um, at other types of jobs, you know, and they, they have to work. So it's something that um, it's a matter of addressing. Well, I think someone had mentioned, right, it takes a village, and we need to, we're, we're all contributing to, to that, so, yes. And again, you know, I'll tell you something. Don't ever be shy about expressing what's going on, because the rest of us don't know, okay? And if you don't inform us and educate us and make us aware, we don't know. We think life is normal the way we see it, okay? We live in our own world, and, and you live in yours, and yours is very challenging, very different. And so unless you inform us and you let us know, it's very difficult sometimes for us to imagine how challenging that can be. And so, you know, for anybody who's a parent here, don't ever be shy, demand, okay? Because, you know, And I start getting comfortable, because after <laughs> the meeting, we started, and what about if we do this, and what about if we do that? You, know, you need to you know, speak yes. up. Because if not, you won't be here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> okay. Um, well, if there's no additional uh, feedback for this meeting, I, I will ask for a small favor if we can just stay back for a couple of minutes for a quick photo op. Uh, we're very excited of our attendance today, or what we discussed, and what's you know to come forward with with you know we see the the steps moving forward. So if you can join me for a picture, and we'll sh we'll share that everywhere. We're, we'll spotlight it, um, and I think that's also sharing the message of whoever, like I said, wants to be involved um, in this one of a kind initiative uh, for our region. Um, 
that they can come forward as well. So um, please don't leave. Take a picture. There's refreshments. That's for you. That's not for show. They're real. Make sure you take a, a snack. Um, and, and again, thank you for today. Oh, so can I adjourn the meeting? I need someone to motion to adjourn the meeting. And I second. So thank you. <laughs> Ms. Ramos, uh, Mr. Jaime motioned. Ms. Amiguel second. The motion for adjournment. This is Dr. Ruth and God bless you guys. Take care of each other and God willing we'll talk next month. Sounds great. Thank you, Dr.